Committee on Energy will come to order. Without objection, the chair is authorized to declare a recess of the subcommittee at any time. Welcome to today's hearing entitled Unearthing Innovation, the Future of Subsurface Science and Technology in the United States. And before I recognize myself for five minutes in opening statement, I would simply note that uh, our subcommittee chairman, Mr. Williams, is under the weather, and I and other members on the Republican side will be tag-teaming uh, presiding today over this hearing, and we expect him to be back very promptly. That said, today the Energy Subcommittee will explore the status of U.S. subsurface science and technology research, a field of study that's highly relevant for Americans all around the country, including those in my home state of Oklahoma. Our country has significant subsurface energy resources, and if harnessed correctly, these resources have the capacity to provide all Americans with clean, baseload power and secure energy storage for generations to come. Subsurface science encompasses a broad range of technologies and energy sources, ranging from next generation mining and mineral extraction to advanced geothermal energy and carbon sequestration. A strong understanding of subsurface systems is essential, not only for har harnessing today's resources, but for expanding our clean energy portfolio, sustaining critical domestic energy supplies, and ensuring that the long-term storage of carbon dioxide and nuclear waste. Despite significant advances in recent years, the fundamental and applied research in these fields faces unique challenges associated with accessing the subsurface. That's why robust support for subsurface R&D is critical for U.S. energy independence and national security. On the Science Committee, we prioritize the fundamental and early stage research that leads to groundbreaking technologies. And subsurface science is truly one of these areas a multidisciplinary field of study that maximizes return on investment by advancing several clean energy pathways at once. This is an important segment of our all of the above clean energy strategy. While I look forward to hearing from our subsurface experts here today, I'm particularly pleased to see representation from the U.S. geothermal industry. Advanced geothermal technologies have the potential to transform the U.S. energy sector. Geothermal is a source of clean and renewable energy that is always on. Yet, although the United States leads the world in geothermal power production, geothermal still contributes less than 1% of the total utility-scale U.S. electricity generation. While I've seen the value of geothermal energy in my district with Oklahoma's thriving geothermal heat pumps industry, more work needs to be done to allow the rest of the country to access the full power of this resource. Federally funded research programs at the Department of Energy have a history of paving the way for industry innovation. It is critically important to our clean energy in the future that we have the support they need to pursue research that industry cannot undertake. That's why three years ago, the Science Committee worked to get my bill, the Advanced Geothermal Research and Development Act, signed into law as a part of the Bipartisan Energy Act of 2020. This legislation provided DOE with a comprehensive reauthorization of its geothermal technologies R&D activities, including its Frontier Observatory for Research in Geothermal Energy, FORGE as some of us call it, program, directing DOE to partner with industry and academia to improve the next generation of geothermal energy systems. Just last week, a participant in the FORGE program, Fuhrer Energy, here with us today, you can correct me on that, announced a record advance achievement of an enhanced geothermal system site. I hope that this afternoon we can get a clear picture of the outcome of some of these kinds of investments and recommendations for appropriate next steps. I also look forward to our long, larger discussions that will improve our understanding of the subsurface environment that both DOE and U.S. industry are advancing groundbreaking activities to meet our present and future energy resource needs. Recently, I was fortunate enough to visit Baker Hughes' research facilities in Oklahoma and saw firsthand the potential for industry collaboration and technology transfer between subsurface energy sectors and applications. If we want to ensure a diverse portfolio of clean energy technologies now and in the future, we in Congress should prioritize this kind of important fundamental research and partnership. I want to thank our witnesses for their testimony, and I look forward to a very productive discussion.